Hi, I'm Leif Kios with Haptex, and today I'm going to be showing you the TC3 Sim content with Haptex. Uh, TC3 stands for Tactical Combat Casualty Care, um, and that's the accepted pre hospital battlefield standard of care um, for the U.S. Armed Forces. So, what we did in this content is we combined an existing computer based simulation called TC3 Sim developed by ECS in Orlando, Florida. Um, and we added in the Haptex gloves and put it in VR. And this is a research project, so it's not been deployed, uh, but we're testing the efficacy of using both VR and Haptex in training. So I'm wearing the Haptex gloves, and these gloves allow me to feel different things in VR. So there's a bunch of tactile actuators arrayed over the palm and fingertips. And when I reach out and touch an object, uh, those inflate and I feel a pressure and I know to stop. Uh, there's also a force feedback exoskeleton on the back of the hand that can resist grasping motions so that rigid objects, uh, like some of the tools you'll see me holding, feel solid in my hand. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm in the simulation now, and you'll see I'm in this room on the battlefield. Uh, in all these scenarios, the soldier was wounded out in the street. That guy's providing cover. He's gonna have been brought in here. So we're in the, the second phase of care uh, right now. Um, the way that this works is I can see and use my hands just like I would in real life. When I reach out and touch an object, I feel the, the pressure of that object on my fingers wherever I'm actually touching it. So if I touch the side, I feel it on the side. Um, and then I've got all my equipment over here in my medic bag, and uh, we just have it floating up above to make it easier to find it, but it's all pretty usable. Um, and then on my left here is uh, where we have the patient's equipment, so the IFAC. Uh, so we're trying to teach soldiers when they should use their equipment versus when they should use the casualties. So we've got four scenarios we've developed so far, and I'm going to start with the needle chest decompression. So this is our menu system. We have a briefing here. In this scenario, a soldier was shot out in the street. You've already applied your reclusive dressing and now you're going to be uh, doing a needle chest decompression because he's still having respiratory distress. So here's our casualty. Um, you can see the reclusive dressing has already been applied, and in all these scenarios, the first step is always to equip your gloves. So just grab them to equip them. Uh, next, we're going to be cleansing the insertion site. So I got my alcohol wipe here, and you can see it kind of flops around like an actual one. And we'll clean down the whole area uh, in front of him. And now I'm going to grab my 14 gauge needle, prepare it, get it out of its container, and now locate the second intercostal space between the second and third ribs. So once you get your finger on it, you can kind of feel uh, where the ribs are. Uh, you're going to mark the spot and push it all the way down. Hear the release of the air, and then pull it out. Grab the sharp container so you don't accidentally step on it later. Pop it in, close it up, put it back in the bag, and now secure the catheter in place with the tape. So some of these uh, items that we have, you're actually doing exactly what you would like that needle. Some of them, because it's a research project, we just had it autocomplete. So the tape, you simply tap it to here and it does it. Um, now I'm going to roll him over into the recovery position, grab my TC3 card, and write down what we did. Cool. Set that there, put the pen back in the bag, and we're done. Um, so we can go through each one of the steps in this procedure and actually complete it uh, and train the correct muscle memory in the process.